Next, we want to review various treatment approaches. Remember that not everything we discuss will apply to your child's particular case. Your doctor will review with you the planned approach and the predicted outcome. Depending on where the malformation is in the body, the type of malformation, and how complicated the malformation is, one or more treatment approaches may be needed. These include embolization, focused radiation, neurosurgery, or a combination of procedures. The treatment of choice for most arterial and vascular malformations is an embolization procedure. It is the safest and most reliable treatment. Embolization means blocking the flow of blood into the blood vessels that feed the malformation. Blocking the flow is accomplished with various embolic materials. These include small coils, stents or balloons inserted into the blood vessels that are feeding the malformation, or injections of sclerosing agents, or polymer adhesives, a form of medical glue. Focused radiation, sometimes referred to as radiosurgery or gamma knife, utilizes a highly focused beam of radiation directly to the malformation. The radiation seals the malformation over weeks, months, or even years without any incision or pain. The radiation beam can be used to treat vascular malformations that were once considered inoperable. Neurosurgery, performed under a surgical microscope, is attempted when the plan is to remove the malformation. However, surgery is not a common recommendation for most malformations due to the increased risk associated with an operation. When trying to surgically remove the malformation without previous embolization to dry it up, there is a very serious risk of bleeding. Sometimes a combination of these treatment approaches may be appropriate. This is especially true when the malformation is located in a critical area of the body. Next, let's see what happens during the embolization. Earlier, we showed an illustration of a malformation and explained how the blood does not flow normally because it is diverted. Blocking the malformation with medical glue, as shown in this case, allows the blood to pass the malformation and flow normally. Here are a series of animation clips to illustrate the use of medical glue as an embolic agent in the treatment of a malformation located in the brain. First, here is a pre-treatment angiogram showing the malformation. The tangle of blood vessels is so dense that the malformation appears as one mass. Now let's look at a drawing of the malformation and zoom in to show how the tangle might appear. In this example, the blood flow is severely limited to important areas of the brain because of this tangle. Treatment begins with the specialist under angiography guidance, threading a catheter to the area of the malformation. Then, with the catheter in place, the embolic agent, in this case the medical glue, is injected into the tangle. Let's zoom up the animation and take a look. See how the glue fills the tangle of blood vessels? Then the catheter is removed. The glue remains and sets. Now, let's take another look at the angiogram after the treatment. The contrast dye shows less of the tangle because it is blocked off successfully. When compared to the pictures before treatment, the results are very impressive. In particular, notice how the dye is now able to reach the blood vessels within the brain. This shows improved blood flow, which was the major goal of embolization. The embolization takes place under angiography. That's why it is called angioembo. Angiography provides the pictures during the embolization procedure. Generally, for malformations involving arteries, the embolization procedure is accomplished by threading the thin flexible catheter to the malformation, other times, usually for a malformation involving veins and small capillaries, a direct puncture is made through the skin to inject the embolic agent. First, a needle puncture is made into the vein near or at the malformation. Then, while viewing the malformation carefully under the guidance of the angiography, the medical glue or sclerosing agents is released into the malformation. Patients who have a treatment involving angiography will be monitored overnight in the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit, the PICU, and after that will usually have a two to four day stay in a regular hospital unit. We also want you to know that significant improvements can be made.
Here at Roosevelt Hospital, our experienced team will help you every step of the way by explaining your options and guiding you through the process. And lastly, we want to review the various resources available here at Roosevelt Hospital. The Child Life Program offers children and their parents a variety of services. The Child Life Specialist helps children reduce the stress of being in the hospital for those receiving inpatient treatment and provides play opportunities to support and continue therapeutic goals. The Child Life Specialist can also help to prepare your child for a procedure and hospitalization. The Social Work Department can provide support and information about community resources. They also assist parents with the discharge process as well as insurance issues. In addition to these various specialists, there are a number of helpful websites you might consider looking into. This concludes our video presentation. Our goal was to help you better understand the topic of vascular malformations. We covered a great deal of information about these malformations, about the diagnostic testing and treatment procedures, and what happens in the hospital. Remember, if you have any questions or need any additional information, please ask any member of your health care team.